For 60 years, this morning's guest has put his trust in retail. Now, Laura's Healthcare Systems has put their trust in him. Who is he? You'll meet him coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at Seacoast Medical Center on Highway 9 in Little River. We're focused on the Loras Seacoast Healthcare Foundation and we're visiting with its founding board chairman, Frank Bolino. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, Greg. Thank you so much for good. coming in early on a Friday morning. How exciting to get good, you Good in. to be here. I'm glad I can be here today. And how about the, uh, the kickoff of the Loras uh, Seacoast Healthcare Foundation. Literally a year ago, you all had your first board meeting, I think you said. Correct, we did. It was a lot of discussion with the board at the hospital on whether to form a foundation or not. But because of the big expansion plans we have in Loris and at Seacoast, we decided a foundation was the right thing to do to help promote and help fund the hospital. It's common that community hospitals will have a foundation, is that right? Yes, I think all the hospitals in our area, exception of Grand Strand, have foundations. Mm -hmm. Conway has a foundation, Georgetown has a foundation. Mm -hmm. so it's very important to, to help the hospital and support the hospital in many ways. You know, I was fascinated in reading a little bit for Tim Brown, who was with us on Monday, to see the amount of $185 million, I believe, in annual revenues coming out of Laura's health care system. I mean, so it is a big group. It's not a small like it was maybe in, uh, I believe, 1950. Uh, things have changed quite a bit. Certainly they have, yes. The hospital started in Loris in 1950, so there have been major changes since then. And of course, the biggest move they made is when we came to Seacoast here a number of years, uh, just a few years ago. It was just a few years ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this has been very good for the community and very good for the Loris hospital system, too. And of course, we have the beds coming up shortly, too. We're going to build 50 beds here. 50? 50. 50 beds, yes. Mm -hmm. Construction will probably start within the next year, roughly. So That's that'll right. be very good for the area. Actually, um, Little River, North Myrtle Beach is the largest community in the state that's not serviced by a hospital. Is so that this right? is something we need very badly in the area. Little River, North Myrtle Beach is the largest community in the state. Not to repeat you there, but right. I mean, just to take that in, to think about the population explosion up here and to think about not having a, a big hospital. That's right, and of course we're fixing to have a lot more explosion and growth too with the growth on Highway 9. There's a lot of major projects that have been announced out here right across the road from us here at Bay Tree is going to be a big project. So mm -hmm. the area, the north end of the county is really growing. Real quick about yourself, Frank, are you originally from the area? Well, I actually was born in Bishopville, South Carolina in 1948. Oh, 47, wow, you dated I was actually born. Yeah. Yes, right, right. born in 47. Uh, my father moved here in 1948 to the Cherry Grove, which was actually Cherry Grove, the city of Cherry Grove at that time. Right, He right. moved here because he loved to fish. Um, and he was in the retail business in Bishopville, but so he moved his retail business down here, uh, grocery business. And, of course, in 1948, in, in Cherry Grove, there were probably 100 houses in the entire city. Well, there were. <laughs> uh, Cherry Grove actually ended just a few blocks up because the Cherry Grove, what is known today, was actually an island at that time. Is that so right? C.D. Nixon in 1952 filled the inlet in to make Cherry Grove the size it is today. Wow. Um, <clears throat> but my grandparents and parents actually have been coming here since the early 30s. Is uh, that right? From Bishopville? From Bishopville, Do you still have yes. family down there? Uh, not very much. No, most everybody followed us to the beach is right. what happened Came really in, here, the, I'm sure. in the 60s and the 70s, yeah. actually. Um, but and, what, and what business was that your father founded in 1948, Frank? He founded a grocery store, a typical okay. beach-type grocery store. And, of course, back then, grocery stores weren't as big as they are today. Uh, you didn't have all the selection of a grocery store. Um, I can remember when I was young, you actually had to package a lot of products that you sold and so forth. You bought rice and those type of things in a 50-pound bag and, you would and individually pack packaged them. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Did you grow up in the family business, Frank? Yes. Mm -hmm. Been very involved in the family business all of my life, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and whenever I got a little older and, and got married, we got very involved in the growing Bolanos. Actually, we have a pretty much a complex in Cherry Grove now. It's where we have more than just a grocery store. Bolanos the complex. Right. Wow, yeah. Frank, for viewers who may not have been there, and I've never been there, I'm sorry to say, uh, should come up to this part of the county more often. But give us a, just a sense of what's there when you talk about it as a complex. Is the grocery store still a part of it? Primarily, business right now is a grocery business. We have a, an 80,000 square foot grocery store. Oh, come on. 80, yes, we 000? do. Yes, which is wow. 
which has a lot of variety type merchandise in it. But primarily our gross business in that store is the grocery business. Yeah. We also have a large gift shop in the same area, in the same complex. Wow. Have an ice cream shop, a laundromat, car wash, a uh, very modern true value hardware store where we do all the things hardware store do from cutting screen to mixing paint, all those type of things. How exciting. Uh, also have a, a Shell gas station and a convenience store too. So. We all cover right all the there gamics. on site. Yes. Mm -hmm. Son of a gun. And you still uh, live up <laughs> clearly up in this area, Frank. Yes. Yes. I live on 45th Avenue, which is just about a mile from where the store is on Sea Mountain Highway. Right. Do you walk to work? Uh, not very often. Not anymore, I probably yeah. should, but I don't do much <laughs> of that. My wife takes a lot of exercise, and she walks a lot, but I haven't started doing that yet. Yeah. Well, you look fine. Obviously, that had an impact if you want I order. Do you have family that are, have grown up in the business uh, or have remained in the business, any of your kids? No, I don't. I have two children, and neither one of them have a lot of interest in the retail business. Maybe they worked in it too much when they were young, maybe. <laughs> uh, but one of them is in the banking business, and one is in the restaurant business. So neither right? one of them work in the business. Yeah. We have a lot of employees that work for us over 20 years, though. Really? We have some very good management and some good, a good general manager and everybody. So we have a very good operation, you very good employees. Celebrating 60 years this year. Yes, 60 2008. years. 2008. Wow. That's a big deal. It is, yes. And to think about, do you still have pictures around the, uh, around the complex there of Bolano's back in 48? And, and it was called Bolano's back yes, then? Yes, it was called Bolano's then, right, yes. Right, mm right. -hmm. Yes, we do. Actually, I have a picture of the first store showing myself and my father and my grandfather standing in front of the store. Oh, boy. It was taken, actually, in 1951, actually. Oh, but excellent. we have a number of pictures of that time. And some pictures of East Cherry Grove, which in those days, there was just nothing there. I mean, right, right. I can remember when I was a boy, there were sand dunes 20 foot tall where the store sits today. Um, we don't see sand dunes today, right? We, no. we see a few sea oats, but that's about it. How exciting, Frank, for you. Could you have ever imagined, uh, even growing up, or think back to your early childhood days about, uh, for instance, this area where Seacoast Medical Center is now, or as you said, the expansion that's going to take place across the street at the former Bay Tree. What was this like back then, and what did you ever imagine it would become? Well, there was nothing here back then. I mean, even Sea Mountain Highway and Cherry Grove, when you got away from the ocean just two blocks, there was nothing on Sea Mountain Highway. Mm. And today, there are businesses pretty much all up and down Sea Mountain Highway. Um, I guess we'd have had better foresight, I guess, back then. We'd have bought a lot more real estate and done things a lot different <laughs> than what we did. Uh, my grandfather actually bought a lot in Cherry Grove in 1933 and paid $100 for it. No. And two years later, he bought a second lot and paid $300 for it. But the problem is he never bought another lot. He didn't buy any more. <laughs> so all the property I accumulated, I did it in the late 60s, the property I accumulated, and right. up till today. Yeah, yeah. Um, how fascinating, Frank. You know, as you think about, of course, for you, the growth. And now retail's changed a good bit as well over your uh, time period of being involved in the family business. Yes, it certainly has. Number one, it's become very competitive. Um, in the 50s and 60s, of course, most of the businesses were independent-type businesses. Mm -hmm. Today, they're mostly chains is what they are. Right, Independents right. have had a hard time, and most independents are gone today for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. It's just very hard to get the financial backing to make a store work this day and time. Do you have a pharmacy there in the facility as well? No, but we're in the process of planning a pharmacy Is right that now. right? Yes, That'll be a are. great addition, mm -hmm. I'm sure, as you all plan that out. That's something we needed for several years. We just were reluctant to do it because of having to rely on a pharmacist, you might say. And right. That's tough. If our, if our market manager doesn't come to work today for some reason or is sick, we can go cut meat pretty easily. But mm -hmm. the pharmacist doesn't come to work, you can't fill a prescription. So that's a great point. That's the reason we've kind of held off. But we are working on that now and are planning on opening in that not this coming summer, but the summer of 2009 is our plan right How now. How exciting, Frank. You know, as you think about, as you, as you talk about the 50-bed expansion here, now is that going to take place at... Seacoast Medical Center or at Loris uh, Hospital, or is it going to be split between the two? No, the 50 beds will be right here at Seacoast. Really? Great. The plans today are to build the 50 beds right behind this complex in a new tower that we're going to build. Mm -hmm. and we're also going to build it where we'll have room for further expansion, too, as the need arises in the area. Okay. Um, now, in Loris, there's actually going to be an addition there with an emergency center, new pharmacy, and new items that we need in that area. Um, the emergency room in Loris is very busy. Uh, hasn't been updated in a good many years. So mm -hmm. we're going to put a whole brand new uh, emergency room in a little different location. So we'll have a very nice facility there. How exciting, Frank. Your service as chairman of the Laura Seacoast Healthcare Foundation means you're actively involved in both locations, both of the main locations in Loris and here at Seacoast. 
Uh, yes, very involved in it. And, of course, the first year has been real interesting getting it up and getting it started yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we actually only have one staff member, Tammy Eves, which has been right. with us a while, and she's done a great job. Absolutely. But she has her hands very full with everything she has to do. Oh, yeah. And we have several events coming up in the next few months that we're planning, so we've all been very busy. We have right. a very active board of directors, too, in the foundation. They're, yes, yes. They're very hands-on. We have 11 members on the board is what it is. Right, right. Very involved and very active, and it's a, it's almost a daily type of thing that we have to do something. We spent like time that. with Rayford Green on Wednesday, and of course Mary Martin was here with us yesterday, which was very exciting. And obviously to, to wrap up the week with the board chairman's a big coup. To think about over the course of the last year, or as you all planned it in 2006, what were some of the uh, some of the reasons why you felt it was so important? I know you said you, all the community hospitals have a foundation, but what was the reason to go ahead and kick this off and uh, and really make it happen? Well, I think the biggest reason, again, just got down to getting the community involved in the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, during the CON process for the 50 beds here, the community was very supportive of the hospital, very supportive of needing the beds here. So we figured it was a very good time to move ahead and form a foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, we can get the community a lot more involved in a foundation you can really in the hospital. Right, right. And we think that will be a very good asset for the community. And oh. Dolph Myrtle Beach and, and Little River work very good together on oh, yeah. so we oh, think yeah. that'll be great. An example, the, the Little River and Norfolk Beach Chamber of Commerce are going to have a joint after hours here in March. Great. So very think, exciting. Things like that will be very good. Absolutely. And Mary shared that with us yesterday and that will be very exciting. You know, we talked about, you mentioned CON. For viewers who may not be familiar, is that the Certificate of Need? A Certificate of Need, yes, okay. for the hospital, which is done through DHEC. And that's right. a very involved, very long process oh, where yeah. the DHEC comes in and basically decides if there's a need for the hospital in the area. So right. that took quite a while. It did, very definitely. If a viewer needs to get off to work now, Frank, or get family off to school, what's the best phone number for someone to call about the foundation? Is that the 390-8215 number? Correct, yes. Okay. That's a good number. Laura'sHealth.org if they wanted to go online. And I think yes. you said there's a link to the Laura Seacoast Healthcare Foundation. There is, yes. Okay, yes. great. You know, as you think about, uh, as we think about some of those expansions up and down as Highway 9 is continuing to grow, that's, I guess, the main corridor that hooks the two communities together. It is, yes. And there's a lot of growth on Highway 9. There's a number of, of new businesses being built there right now. Mm. And again, I know that the housing industry is a little bit slow right now, right? But that's mm. not going to last long. When the housing industry rebounds and comes back, eventually we're going to see it almost solid between Loris and North Myrtle Beach. Highway mm. 9 will have just solid businesses on it and, and residential off to both sides of it. The National incredible. Paper Company has got a large project planned out here. And is that going to happen, do. Frank? Well, it will eventually. Again, right. as I said earlier, I think the economy is a little bit slow now in the housing right. industry, sure. but it's going to rebound. Mm -hmm. And I think we live in the best place in the United States, I think. Listen um, up. Wow. Well, I'm I think quote we do. You. I mean, we, we quoted we... Mary yesterday <laughs> saying that the, uh, the growth is going to continue unabated uh, as it relates to commercial growth. It's amazing to think about, and of course to hear you say the best place to live, uh, did you say in America? I think so, yes. Wow. Uh, I do have a house in Florida, but I don't get down there very much, but I wouldn't want to live down there, and so right. I think this is the best place to live. And I've hired several people lately from the northern area, and everybody that lives up north I think wants to move to the south, right? And right. there's no better place to move than North Myrtle Beach area. To think uh, about some of the growth, of course, on the south end of, of the beach, to see the the market common exploding withers preserve and of course the hard rock theme park just what that can do for the county in general mm -hmm. to think about the name recognition aside from some of the tremendous growth you all have had in this part of the county it's amazing yes it certainly is yes uh, it really is you know let's break down the last 12 months and you since you had your first board meeting 12 months ago some of the immediate pushes that you wanted to get into i think tammy talked about on the 31st literally within a week You've got an event uh, maybe here at Seacoast, is that right? And then another one on February 7th, I believe. Actually, we have a couple of cultivation events scheduled the, over the next month. The first right. one is the 31st at the Surf Club. is where it okay. is here in sure. North Beach. Sure. Yes. Then we have scheduled February the 8th in Loris at the Health Center over there is what we have. Okay, good. And we have a couple others that we're working on right now. The event with the Chamber of Commerce is already scheduled for March the 18th is when that's scheduled. Great. So three big events coming up. And what are some of the things you all will do to help highlight the need of the Laura Seacoast Healthcare Foundation? Well, we had a lot of different presentations where we're going to show exactly what's going to happen here. We already have renderings of the two buildings, renderings of the outside of the building, of course. And we also have layouts of the inside showing the people who are interested 
where the emergency room is going to be, the beds and everything. So we have a, a very detailed presentation that we're going to do at these events. Mm -hmm. um, and again, we want to get the community very involved in it. And of course, we need their financial support is what we also need right, too, right, right. which is very important. Um, small hospitals do have a lot of financial problems, of course, sometimes. And not problems is not probably the right word, but right, financial yeah. opportunities and a lot of places that, that we could expand things. Mm -hmm. um, Loris is Seacoast uh, have been very fortunate being in the area that we in, of course, right. with the expansion and the growth has certainly helped. Oh yeah. Uh, Seacoast has is, is exceeded all expectations of what we thought. Actually, is that right? Yes. Yeah. The hospital here now, or excuse me, the Seacoast here now actually sees over 20,000 people a year in the emergency room. 20,000 uh, just right here in this uh, Seacoast Medical Center annually. Yes. That is incredible. That's a lot of people. And the community relies on it, I mean. It, and yeah. it saves the community having to drive a long ways to go to have other tests and other things done. There's a mm -hmm. lot of procedures done here. A lot of day surgeries are done here. So with the addition of the hospital, it will allow somebody to come here to stay a couple of days if they need to. I think uh, Tammy talked earlier in the week, Frank, that you all are undertaking to raise, I mean, that $30 million will be spent. I believe she talked about $6 million to be raised or uh, pursued by the foundation, $3 million for each of the facilities. That's our first goal. Of course, we hope to set some more goals. We hope as we go <laughs> along, because really the total project in both both hospitals is fifty million dollars of what it is. is the thirty million right? is actually Seacoast. Wow! About a twenty million dollar project in Lower Sisseton. So that's a lot of money. That is. Um, and we have set is. an original goal of six million dollars for the foundation to raise. Mm -hmm. And we've already done some some meetings in the community. And again, we have some support of folks in the community. So we think we're going to be able to do this. Of course, it's going to take a lot of work. Huh? It will, yes. And there's yes. a lot of competition for the dollar right now, too, as we both know. We, mm -hmm. we both actually happen to serve on Ori Georgetown Foundation Board, right? The Ori Georgetown Technical College Foundation. That's right. I see you are, uh, you've served as chairman, a two-term chairman of the North Myrtle Beach Chamber of Commerce, obviously being on the Tech Foundation Board now here, and even the Laura's Healthcare uh, System Strategic Planning Committee. Aside from a number of other things you do. How do you do all this and continue to run your business, Frank? Well, sometimes it gets tough. I have to run my business, <laughs> it seems like, before 7 o'clock in the morning and after 9 o'clock at night, it right. seems like. Yeah. Um, and I've probably got too involved in too many things the last few years. I probably need to, to shed a few of these items I'm involved in. Uh -huh. But again, I thought that the hospital and the health care right. system was very important for sure. the community. Absolutely. Um, I've been around hospitals a lot all my life. My father was burned very severely when he was four years old. No, at and age four. At four years old, mm. right. So I guess I've been in hospitals a lot of my life and so forth. And my father, really, when he was burned, we're talking about in, in 1922 is when he was burned. And of course, then they didn't have penicillin hadn't been invented. So mm. they kind of waited a few years for him to die, and he didn't. So then they started doing medical practice on him, I guess, and procedures on him. But uh, during, uh, I guess, my grade school and high school years, it seemed like almost every year he was having some form of an operation. Is that right, Frank? Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. We were figuring another day. Now, my father died about 15 minutes ago, but he had 88 operations in his life, is what he had because he had of the burns. When did you say he died? Uh, about 15 months ago. He died. Months ago, months I'm ago. sorry. Yeah, yeah months. right, yes. right. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. And, uh, and you said 88 surgeries over yes. the course of his life. My mm -hmm. Lord. All right. He'd, he was um, a lot of a lot of practice, and I guess we're done in him a lot of procedures and stuff. Because in the burns, really, uh, medical field didn't know much about that. Probably World War II, probably when there was a lot of of improvements made in that area. Right. Because. The skin grafts that were done on him before that didn't take very well. It didn't do very good because there were a lot of procedures that were practicing on that. Right. But maybe for that reason, I guess is one reason I was very interested in in the medical profession and Seacoast and the hospital here. That's very important. Of course, that highlights we're here in the lobby of Seacoast Medical Center. Things going off uh, all morning, and, it, and clearly the activity level is high at all times here on a Friday morning at 7 to see this kind of influx of folks. But it is 24-7 here, isn't it? Yes, it is. Emergency room, of course, is open 24-7. Right, right. Uh, and a lot of folks come in here. Um, it's, it's interesting to be here sometime and see the helicopter come in when somebody has to be transferred to Charleston or Wilmington or something like that. Oh, yeah. Know? Oh, a lot yeah. of that happens now with the modern medicine that we have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of trauma centers around the area where people can be transferred if it's necessary. So it's mm -hmm. very interesting. Frank, for you, you know, as you think about it and as you travel up to Loris itself and back and forth and to see some of the expansion, as you've been visiting hospitals virtually your entire life, can you think about pinpoint some of the real changes that have, uh, of course, some of the improvements since you got active with Loris and Seacoast. It's been, uh, the improvements have been incredible. Oh, yes, yes. The medical field, I mean, just simple things that we, 
uh, couldn't do a few years ago, we do so easy today, right? Mm -hmm. I guess mm -hmm. if you go back a few years ago, I guess what used to make the biggest impression of me when I would go in the operating room or into the room after my father's operation was the amount of blood and so forth that, right. that happened. And of course, today they control blood bleeding very easily with they the really different medications do. they do. Mm -hmm. It's just different. Absolutely. Uh, the procedures are done so much easier now. The new x-ray machines that are they're out there, Loris and Seacoast right now are getting a new 64 slice x-ray type machine which is that again right? it's, just, it's unbelievable what that machine will do compared to just five years ago mm -hmm. technology has changed so much here with viewers of course uh, they if they were with us on wednesday they had a chance to spend some time with Rafer vereen yesterday with mary martin who are some of the other folks that make up the board you don't have to give us all the names but a little bit about uh, some of the folks that that serve on the board with you all uh, 11 of you all i believe from the get-go is that right uh, we've actually added a couple since we started okay, and so good. forth. A new board member is Rima Hewlin. Yes, uh, She lives in the Tidewater area, so she's a new board member. Right. Uh, Harry Thomas, who has lived in the area by most of his life, I guess, used to have the Togger shop in Ocean Drive. Right. And his daughter has um, Joan Crosby there in Myrtle Beach. So. Yes, of course. But he's very active. He's been a, a major help with the foundation. It mm. seemed like weekly we talk about something or have a meeting to plan something with the foundation. That's tremendous. Uh, Dr. Ray, I think you mentioned, which is an yeah. optologist in the lower area. Tracy um, Ray, the right. Area. Mm -hmm. right. Uh, Dr. Wright, which actually works for Seacoast here and works in the head of the emergency department is where he oh, is. Oh, great. So he so. can surely talk about when you have your uh, sessions either at the surf club or there at the health and fitness center in Laura's he can really talk about the the needs as directly as anyone and he's very knowledgeable of the area and been involved again with the hospital system for a number of years now right right um, he saw my mother several years ago when she had some seizure problems right here at Seacoast just after they were open so is that right he's very knowledgeable mm -hmm. um, Dennis Jones is on our board uh, he's right. actually our treasurer oh um, good so he's very involved mm-hmm mm -hmm. um, Saw the vice chair, someone we couldn't get in. Uh, and may, uh, who was the vice chair? Uh, Ed the, Prince. Ed is, Prince, is exactly, right. right. Ed's right. actually on vacation this week. Yes, I think I he's know. somewhere in the islands this week. We'd so love he, to have him he's in. Enjoying but, the pretty uh, weather down there. Particularly excited to get Rayford earlier in the week, and uh, and obviously Tim Brown to kick off. Is he also on your board? Yes, he is. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so he has a dual role there, and I understand that was pretty much his brainchild. He'd been working hard to kick that off. I'm sure you and he had talked about right. that for a long yeah, time. Yeah, a number of the board members have talked about the foundation for a good while, and it probably took us two years to decide to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, we mm -hmm. had a company come in and help us some with the development of it. Great, good. But pretty much in the last year, we've taken it and pretty much run with it. And again, mm -hmm. it's been great to have people like Rayford Vereen or Ed Prince or Harry Thomas, all these people to just have weekly meetings to talk mm -hmm. about this and mm -hmm. to plan it and move forward. And Tammy's been with us now a few months, Tammy Eves. Yes. So she's been a very big asset. 390-8215 is her direct line. If viewers uh, want to pick up the phone and call right in to find ways, what are some of the types of uh, ways that if someone was to make a donation that those dollars would be expended? Is it principally for, uh, for actual physical plan, or will those be going into, uh, into activities themselves? Well, there are a lot of options. We're actually going to have some naming opportunities at the hospital where somebody could name an area of the hospital after themselves or after a family member or something, right. where, where maybe the lobby might be named or the cafeteria area might be named. Very nice. And, of course, there's also the opportunity if they would like to buy an X-ray machine or something like that for the hospital to donate something like that to the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have some areas in the new uh, hospital area where we maybe have a courtyard where there'll be some naming opportunities in there, maybe something as simple as maybe a paver or a wall or maybe Great. something they'd like to do to remember a loved one maybe at a fountain or something like that something nice so. there'll be plenty of opportunities to help the foundation in the different ways that a viewer could make donations are you are these are all those sound like pretty large donations you'll take donations of all sizes certainly yes mm -hmm. okay we have some information that we're going to show at the after hours here in march of different ways that an individual can get involved okay okay very definitely you know when you think about of course tax benefits and a lot of viewers as they wrapped up last year were thinking about tax benefits but if, uh, this is a 501c3 of uh, foundation it certainly is and of course there's ways that people can make larger donations through things like stock or real estate and things great point and the average person doesn't realize the advantage of that if you've got a piece of stock that you bought maybe 10 years ago that's appreciated in value three or four times you can donate to, to a foundation and get the full write off on the day's value and not have to have any capital gains that you're paying taxes on. So there's That's major true. advantages there to donate some kind of a, of a good item like a piece of real estate or a, maybe even a car or a, yes. a stock or whatever. That's a very good point. You know, a lot of folks oftentimes are worried if they make a donation, 
that a lot of those dollars will go into administrative costs or into just into lots of costs and not actually get to the meat of the uh, of what they're trying to give money to. Is that the issue here with the Laura Seacoast Healthcare Foundation? No, with Laura Seacoast Healthcare Foundation being local, 100 percent of the money will stay right here in the two hospital systems is where it will stay. Um, there's no administrative fees. There's nothing going to come out of this money. So if you give $1,000 to the hospital, it's going to go directly into where you would want it to go, whether it's part of building the building or what it is. So there will be no administration fees of any kind. You look, look forward five years, Frank. What is, the, what, is what you hope the, uh, the, the Laura Seacoast Healthcare Foundation will have done to make these two facilities successful? Well, I think, number one, right now we're new and we're in our infancy. So five years from now, we should be going very strong. We should have a very large foundation. Ideally, I think we should probably have 25 members on our foundation so we can do a lot more functions. Uh, as far as a dollar goal, I don't know what that is off the top of my head, but it right. should be a very large number. Right. Because Seacoast and Loris both are going to need to expand as we go along with the area growth right here. I mean, the 50 beds is just a start for this community. I hope in five years we're looking at building 150 beds is what I think we'll be doing. Listen up, Frank. I love to hear it. Thanks Thank so much you. for being with us Thank this you. morning. Good to have, have a great trip to Florida tomorrow. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with Frank Bolino, chairman of the Seacoast, the Loris uh, Seacoast Healthcare Foundation. Coming up next. Not 82%, not 85%, not even 93%, 100% of your gift, 100% of your gift will be used to provide quality health services and, and great facilities. And you heard Frank say it, 100% will be reinvested right back here in this community. When you make a commitment to support the Laura Seacoast Healthcare Foundation, 100% of those dollars will be reinvested right back here. Take the time to learn more about the foundation. Go online to laurashealth.org or pick up the phone, 843-390-8215, 843-390-8215. Take the time, get involved. You heard Frank say it, now's the time.